Every investor new to direct indexing can use a little help in understanding how to replicate an index in a separately managed account. Most indices are capitalization weighted, meaning that the names with the largest market valuations have the largest weight in the index. That means they have more responsibility for determining how the index moves up and down. There are large names and there are small names, and the small names may be so small that they can hardly influence performance at all. So in order to replicate, for example, a 500 stock index, you don't actually need 500 stocks. The smallest are so small they can't possibly move the index. It turns out that with about 200 to 300 names, you can track an index of 500 names very, very closely. It's as simple as making sure that your position weights are similar to the index weights, that your sector weights are similar to the index sector weights, that your price to earnings, price to book, price to free cash flow, market capitalization, debt ratios are all similar to those of the index. If you can get those things similar, it's very likely that your 300 stock portfolio will have a performance very similar to the 500 stock index. But there's more to it than that. We take into account risk factors. There are dozens of these risk factors, and the risk factors describe how a stock's price moves in relation to an index over time. They tend to be fairly stable, and they don't change much. If you can replicate the risk factors of a benchmark in your smaller portfolio, then that portfolio is very likely to perform very much like the broader benchmark. That's the process of optimization. You can't do it without an optimizer and you can't do it without a risk model. And so we use both in making sure that a portfolio of two to 300 stocks performs very much like a larger index of say 500 stocks. Many clients will ask, why do I have so many stocks? And that's important to be able to answer. The reason is you can only experience idiosyncratic or stock-specific risks and returns if you own that stock. In other words, if a stock presents an opportunity to harvest a tax loss, but you don't own it, you can't take the tax loss. Similarly, if a stock rises because of some special news, maybe a, an earning surprise or a takeover announcement, you can only participate in that upside if you own the stock. So it's very important for portfolios representing an index to hold a large number of names. Finally, it's important to explain to your clients why it makes sense to own a portfolio of individual stocks rather than just an ETF. Now, I should point out, if a client doesn't need any customization or any tax management, an index ETF will be just fine. It'll meet most of their, their needs. But any client who needs some customization, perhaps excluding a stock of a company that they work for, or maybe an, excluding a sector to which they're uh, significantly exposed, or that needs some tax management because they have large embedded gains and legacy positions that they'd like to contribute to the index, for those clients, a separately managed account will make a lot of sense. Separately managed accounts have features not available to ETFs, including the ability to transition assets in and out in kind, which means being able to contribute stocks you already own to a portfolio that will replicate a benchmark or distribute stocks out if you wanna make, for example, a charitable contribution, and you can experience tax advantages within an index that you wouldn't have within an ETF. For more information about each of these advantages, please see some of the other videos located nearby.